Okay then, fellas. So, massive thank you for joining me tonight for doing my first ever masterclass. I've done um, probably hell space, done courses hundreds of times, but um, I've never done a masterclass online. So uh, this is the first time for this. So I hope you um, you enjoy it and take away plenty of tools with you. Um, you know, putting this together is something that has saved me very much over the past seven years. And, you know, over the past seven years of your life, I've very much been on my own journey of self-mastery, I call it, of understanding how I'm showing up in the world, of being a man who externally had everything, but internally felt there was something lacking, there was always something missing. And I could never quite put my finger on what that was for such a long time. So I always thought maybe it was more money. Maybe it was the job that I was doing. Maybe it was something wrong with my family. And I pointed the finger everywhere else other than at the one person that could create some sort of change. And that was me. So as soon as I started to turn the gaze on myself and how I was shaping my own life over seven years ago, things started to change. I began to really began to understand who I was, I began to understand what was making me tick. I began to understand my limiting beliefs, my behaviors, the things that were holding me back as a man, how I was getting in my own way in relationships, how I was stopping myself reaching my full potential. And through doing that, I've developed certain practices, if you like, and what I call a map, a map to mastery, which is a simple and universal roadmap for any man, if you like, to follow, because we all have different lives, we've all got different perspectives, but this is universal and unique to every man to be able to implement in their life so over the past few years, if you like, things have been changing and transforming in how I'm showing up and how I'm now delivering the work that I do. And obviously, this is now the first part of that that I've now transitioned into, which is more of an online presence and being able to create sustainable change for men. Because when men are maybe doing a six-week course or we're listening to podcasts, all the time, or we're reading the self-help books. Yeah, we're watching YouTube videos, we're taking in all this information. And the thing is, when we take in all this information, we have no idea how to implement it. Yeah, it can leave us feeling, feeling more confused on how to get from A to B. You know, we're trying the breathing, we might be trying meditation, you might be trying mindfulness, you may be trying fasting, you go in the gym, you're trying yoga, yeah, we're getting morning sunlight, we're walking in nature, but still there's something that remains unseen and you still feel like there's something not quite right. Yeah, bet you've even changed the jobs. You might have even changed your partner. Yeah, that's the extreme we can go to before we really start to take accountability, fellas, for how we're actually showing up. So on that journey... You know, my sort of role right now is a human performance and men's coach. Yeah, so what does that mean? That means that I help men to perform at the best level possible, given the tools they have at their disposal now, but to help them to get to the place that they want to get to, to help them broaden their mind and knock down any limitations that they have about who they are and who they can become. So it's including not just past, it's including past, present and future, taking a holistic approach to how you show up as a man. Yeah, we're not just focusing on one area, we're looking at the whole man and what shapes you, what has shaped you up to this point and what's going to shape you moving forward to create the life that you desire. Yeah, does any, and I, you know, anything I've said at the minute, does any of this resonate with any of you? Yeah, feel free to put your hand up. Yeah, put a digital hand up if you want. Yeah, presuming we've all had these similar things 
and similar problems, if you like, that are, that are showing up in our lives. So I'm guessing most of us have probably had a busy day. Been in work, most of us. Maybe not you, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, most of us have probably had a busy day in work. Coming home, stressed, seeing your kids, stressed, phone going all the time, stressed. And we really, really struggle at implementing a structured lifestyle that helps us to understand and fully get the most out of our, um, our 24 hours, if you like. Because we all get the same amount of time. But why do some people seem to be more efficient and other people? There's always something left undone. Yeah. So through this then, man, I've developed what, what I call a map to mastery. So I'm just going to explain that to you. Okay. So what I'd like you to do to, is have a pen and paper at hand, not just one piece of paper, because I'm going to ask you to turn it over because there's quite a bit of information I'm going to give you. Okay. And if you haven't got a pen and paper, have a word with yourself, Jeff. <laughs> I'm just looking okay. for the unmute button there. Hang on. <laughs> just when you've got it, mate, just let me know. Okay. So, are we ready, Jeff? Yeah, hang on. Go yeah. on. <laughs> this Never is someone in our way. I'll be going fucking loopy now. Hang on. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, man, what I want you to do is with your pen on your paper, I want you to draw a, a line vertical right down, okay, to down the middle. And then halfway on the page, I want you to draw the line horizontal. And what we're going to do now at the very top of the page, I want you to put the four pillars of pact. Yeah, so write four pillars of pact. So on the top left, I want you to write power. And next to that, I want you to maybe do a dash and then write action. And then the top right, I want you to write awareness. And then a dash. And then thinking. And then I want you to come underneath the horizontal line on the left, if you like. Top left, just under the horizontal line. I want you to write feeling. And compassion. And then on the bottom right, just underneath the horizontal line, I want you to write transformation and being. Okay. So now we've written, obviously, these four foundational pillars. If you like, four foundational pillars. Now, when I obviously describe this map, when I'll go through each pillar now, you will then be able to look at how each one of them is showing up in your life. Okay? So if I'm looking at power, yeah, which means your action, your doing, what am I doing every day? Yeah, the things I'm doing. So this would be your habits, your behaviors, your actions, your routines, your daily structure, sorry, sorry, Paul, we're writing all this down, are we? Write it down, brother, in each, uh, underneath, um, I can repeat it, mate, don't worry. Yes. Do need, sorry, mate, do you need me to repeat it? Yes, please, yeah. Yeah, okay, so under, under power, mate, and action, we would write habits, Behaviors, routine, and structure. And even, you know, something else I'm going to get you to write in there, man. 
I want you to put in there non-negotiables. And then the top right, you're going to go to obviously awareness now. Yeah, and thinking. This is your creative mind. Yeah. Your belief systems. Your self talk. Your mental resilience. Your world view and perception. And once we've read that, man, we're going to go to the bottom left, okay? And we'll now be on feeling and compassion, okay? So this is how we feel the world. Your, how much fun you're having. Pleasure. Emotional intelligence. Emotional resilience and adaptability. How embodied you are. Love is even in there, yeah? The, the ability to have joy. Because take a look at the screen. How serious we all look. Hey? Serious men, aren't we? Okay? And the next one, fellas, okay, is transformation and being... So under this pillar, it's self-governance, self-leadership, purpose and mission, internal and external. Direction in your life, knowing where you're moving towards. and clarity of vision. Okay. So now looking at that map, yeah, identify just really quickly, having a look at where things maybe are out of alignment in your life and what that does that mean so if i'm looking at what i'm doing every day am i doing the things i want to be doing what are my habits how am i showing up every day what are the actions i'm taking am i being assertive Am I being disciplined? Am I working towards something? Am I overdoing certain things and trying to force life? Maybe you're underdoing in certain areas. really just taking a moment to understand you're doing right now in the world as a man and is that actually moving you closer to where you want to be or are you just repeating the same things you've done yesterday and then moaning about your life today 
because you're going to get more of the same tomorrow if you keep doing the same things. Yeah? We are creatures of habit. We like to get up at the same time. We like to walk to work the same and um, walk to work the same way, speak to the same people, go to the same places, do the same things, have the same arguments with our partners, look at the same people in work and think that the knobheads, <laughs> if you like, yeah. We like to dislike the same people. How many people have the same arguments with the partner over and over again every week? It's always the same thing. We react in the same way. Yeah? And if you keep doing the same things over and over again, you're going to get the same results, man. So having a look at what you're doing every single day and how you're structuring your day, is it actually structured in a way that's making you win? Yeah? Because if it's not, you need to look at how you're structuring your day. Things maybe need to change. Mightn't, mightn't be too much either. It might just be a couple of little things here and there. Maybe you're saying yes to too many things that you don't want to do. So you're lacking boundaries. Yeah, you're becoming a yes man, a people pleaser, and becoming passive to life rather than taking life by the balls and living life in the way that you want to live life. Yeah, because we're putting our doing onto other people. And that becomes disempowering. Does this resonate, man? Does this happen in your feel in, in you know in anyone's life here? Yeah, feel free to jump in on, on this pillar if you like and ask any questions that you might have at this point. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind dipping in. It's funny, you know, because it's just probably everyone else is the same. There's, there's a lot there, but there's probably a few that just sort of ping out straight away, isn't it? Mm. And um, it's funny. I think some six weeks holidays when the kids are off is always a bit of a fucking nightmare, isn't it? Let's be honest. But um, the one that stuck out there was the non-negotiables early on, because I think that's that's a term that, in fact, it was probably you that mentioned it way back. But um, mm. I, fe I felt like I had a few of those non-negotiables, and I maintained it for a period of time, and. It was only when you mentioned the word I thought a few of them non-negotiables have just fell by the wayside. So, mm. um, yeah, it's just that daily structure, isn't it, like you say? And before you know it, I mean, like a lot of these things, it comes in sort of ebbs and flows, don't it? You might have a, a few months where you sort of, you, you, you're back on track a little bit and then you, you fall by the wayside again. But um, it's just getting those daily habits again and, and mm. making them daily. I think, you know, I'm speaking for myself here. I think over the last couple of months, I've sort of, uh, for, for various reasons, but not to blame anyone else, is is just lost a few of those daily habits, the, the positive ones, you know, mm. the, the, the cold wars the breath work, that type of thing. So, and then you wonder why you may be not feeling so great. And then it's fucking staring you in the face, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah. And it's, if we can always implement things in our life, fellas, that are going to actually improve how you show up, yeah? So my routine, for example, if I don't have certain things within my routine, like my life right now has been transformed. My non-negotiables are in there before anything else. Like, they're, they're, they're in there first. Like, I don't put anything else other than my non-negotiables, which might be family time, it might be doing some breathing, it might be, you know, doing meditation, for example, it might be doing yoga, it might be going for walks in nature, time with my family, time with my friends, having time alone where I can just be on my own as a man with no one wanting me or having no um, having no roles to play, if you like. Yeah, I like can get completely, you know, get the opportunity to detach from anyone needing anything from me so I can let go of the role of being dad, of being the, the businessman, of being the partner, and I can just disconnect and be on my own equally and be around my mates and have fun. So I ensure that I create a structure and routine for that to happen. Yeah, I don't I don't fill in all the stuff I don't want to do first. I go, well, I've got to work for eight hours. Or I've got to do that there. And I haven't got time for me. Well, of course, my dad, because when I first started my set matters, that I was in, my routine was all about me. Every single morning, I'd do my breath work, my meditation, my gratitude list, my jobs for the day. 
Now let's see if, if the last few months I do bring it in bits and bobs of breath work and stuff. But it's not the same as what it was. I'm not so obsessed with myself. It's more yeah. about trying to be planning helping. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's the name? When you were saying that before, I'm like, yeah, I'm doing that, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. When I think about it, the only thing that I'm not doing is what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what most men do. Sticking with dogs out as much in nature, I've stopped. Yeah, the morning routine isn't as solid as what it was. Um, I'm getting a little bit more frustrated, and that's why, isn't it? Because mm. and we can end up then with this tick list. By the way, so by no means am I saying create a tick list. It, it might be helpful immediately, like for the first month. It might be really helpful to go right. Okay, I need to do bam, bam, bam. That will then create the habit. But equally, if you're getting up and you feel like utter shit every, like of a morning because you're so tired, overwhelmed and exhausted and you're pushing yourself into cold water, into breathing, into going to the gym, you're going to head for burnout. Yeah, because that's the new craze that we all meditate, do breathe in cold water. You know, that is a recipe for burnout. Okay, I'm not saying it's not beneficial, but in moderation. You need to understand you as a man. Yeah, even just eating better, starting to make healthier choices with your diet. You know, we're, we're looking at, um, you're looking at meditation, breath work, cold water, and all these different things. You know, sorry to burst a lot of people's bubble, but if you ain't going to bed and sleeping well, they're not doing shit. That's a fact. They're doing absolutely nothing if you're not sleeping correctly because your sleep is the number one priority for you to live a happy, healthy, and long lifestyle. Yeah? If you're not feeling rested, if you're on your phone all the time, if you're indulging in information, if you're eating really late before you go to bed, like these things are going to affect how you show up. You can get up and do meditation, and it may help to some extent, but equally, you know, it's a process of elimination. If you like, if we don't get the foundations right, man, in our lifestyle, like a building, you know, we'll have some men in there and I'm sure we'll understand building work. You're not going to build a building on a structure on sloppy foundations. Yeah? Why would we do that? Because if we do, it's going to fall. And as soon as things get hard, things are going to move and collapse. So equally, foundations are the most important. What are the immediate things I can be doing? right now to create the most change yeah and number one would be sleep how am i sleeping because what as men we're always looking for something more to do what more can i do we're always looking external yeah when if you have a nice sleep and a good eight hours sometimes that's an internal process yeah anybody ever any of ever feel overwhelmed from the amount of things that they have to do yeah, a lot of doing. So why are we giving ourselves more to do? Why don't we just do more of the things that work? Yeah, it's, e it's easier said than done, by the way, man. But it's the beginning for me of what I call moving the needle. Yeah, we're starting to move the needle towards being the person we want to become. And if we don't change what we're doing, that is not going to happen. That's why we start the first pillar is doing. Yeah, because it's something that immediately we can implement. Any more questions, man, before we move on to the next pillar? Or are we good? Good? Okay. So equally, you know, just something that might be worth noting on, on the, you know, on your pa the power elements and doing is what, when we look at health, okay, if I look at your health, look at this as a pillar, of health. So if you're doing will be physical. It's what am I physically doing with my body and physically doing in the moment or not doing that's gonna help me. Yeah. So we look at our physical health. How can I top my physical health up? Because if it's running on empty, then I need to do certain things that are gonna help. It might be rest. I need to do some non-doing. Yeah, like it could be going to the gym, it might be doing your cold water, it might be breath work, it might be sleeping better. I like think of the habits that you can begin to create in your lifestyle. It might be getting up earlier and going to bed earlier. Yeah, 
could be making sure that you have a hug with your, your missus of a morning before you go to work and actually notice that she's there. Notice your kids before you leave the house. Make sure you're tucking them into bed. Yeah, while they're really young and giving them a hug and telling them a story, if that's, if that's what it is. Yeah. So that's our doing, man. Now we're going to move on to awareness, which is our thinking. Okay. So if I was going to speak about this element, if you like, how do we create the world with our mind? Yeah. So how can you begin to change the world and the world you're in with your own mindset? Yeah. So number one would be understanding your own belief systems as a man. And your own belief systems can be understood by your self-talk, by your judgments of other people. I'm just going to turn this plug on, man, one sec. So your belief systems, yeah, your self-talk, your ability to be mentally resilient, yeah? How resilient am I? Because it's all well and good having positive thoughts, but as soon as something goes wrong, what happens with my thought processes? How easy am I to drop into negative? Yeah? What is my normal level of stress? if you like, because your normal level of stress will be directly correlated to how quickly you react. And if I'm reacting quickly, I'm not taking care of my thought processes. I'm not creating life in a way that flows for me. Okay? So how would I create new belief systems? Do you think what are some of the tools do you think that you could use to implement, to adapt your thought processes to suit you? Yeah? What do you think some are? I do affirmations a lot. Me pulling over more time. I'm yeah. supposed to replace my meditation with that. So I'm, I'm up and I'm acting up at five in the morning. I'm acting with my headphones on, affirmations on. Sometimes I feel like I've got to do my meditation, but I feel like now it's routine I've got. And that's a good up at three in the morning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, we give ourselves so much. Mm-hmm. So I do a lot of affirmations, me and, but at, at times I do react to things. Mm. I'm quite easily disappointed because I'm so I got so so much high standards. You know what I mean? I'm quite easily disappointed. I'm pretty, I'm up there and then my head's down. Sometimes, yeah. I sometimes, I sometimes I deal with it, but then a lot of the time um, it takes me a, an hour or two maybe. Okay, so snap back into it. You know what I mean? So then we just said, who in here, fellas, right, okay, has high expectations of themselves and other people? Yeah? Yeah, same, yeah. Yeah? Okay. So high expectations about what we should be doing in the world and how we should be showing up. Is that truth or a belief system? Is it truth or a belief system that you should... No, it's, 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 it's what you've convinced yourself is, to is right. Yeah, to be yeah. true, right? Though. Yeah. So how a man should show up. Yeah. yeah. Where did you learn how a man should show up? By, by on various <laughs> places, I mean. By, by other people. Hmm. Just, yes, by yeah. other people telling you how to show up, yeah. because that's the only way we learn. This is what you yeah. need to do. This is what a successful man is. This is what your belief should be. You should now be the father, the partner, successful businessman, the entrepreneur. Yeah. Always nice to people. Always come. Oh, don't forget, you need to go to the gym. You need to do your meditation. You need to be fucking fully switched on all the time. Yeah. This is the pressure that's on a man right now, like never before. We're not only the breadwinner, or, you know, we used to only be the breadwinner. Now, now we're expected to be emotionally intelligence yeah we never used to be we were years you know 70 80 years ago we were sent to war and we were told not to feel our emotions now everything's flipped on its head and now we're, we're being asked to be more emotionally attuned to the world and less aggressive yeah so when we're less aggressive 
and we're not letting any anger out of your life, that becomes suppressed. But that suppressed anger has to go somewhere. Yeah? It's not going out. Where's it going? It's going inwards. And then that then becomes resentments. So these high expectations, high expectations that are unmet become resentments. Yeah? High expectations that aren't met by our partner, we put an expectation on them. You need to be like this or I'm not happy. When they don't meet that criteria, you then resent them. And then unconsciously that builds. So that then becomes your beliefs on how your partner should be. Okay? So capturing, if you like, when we're working with the elements of awareness and thinking, is capturing your self-talk because you talk to yourself more than you talk to anybody else. Yeah? You have sixty to 70,000 thoughts a day, say. 95% of them are the same as yesterday. Yeah? But you're not doing anything about it. So really, when I look, when you look at that, if 95% of them are the same as yesterday and you don't make a conscious effort to change your thought processes, you're basically becoming a victim of past circumstances, which means you're choosing your future. You have literally said, I'm not going to change. This is the way I am. Who thinks here that you're a structured being? Yeah, that you're not changeable. Yeah, that no matter what I do, I can't change. So we all agree that we are changeable. Yeah, if we're willing to put the work in, that's good. Yeah, so things can change if you're willing to put the work in. So this ties in then to then, how are you creating the world with your thought processes, which I would say, how are we manifesting our reality? Oh, okay. do you know, just on that, just, on with just that. so, because that's probably sort of everyone does that. That self talk is 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 ruthless at times, in it, and like you say, with our own ways, critics and what have you, and and that's something that you once you become a bit conscious of it, you sort of see it happening. You know, if something happens and you, you you're speaking a bit negatively to yourself about it, it doesn't help. Does it make things ten times worse? But getting onto it, being aware of it's one thing. What 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 would you do to change it? So what I'm saying here is, you said like capture capture your self talk. So if you're at, if you're in, you know, some situation or whatever, and you, you you're conscious because that's half the battle, isn't it? Being aware that you're doing it, but you become conscious of this negative self talk, whether it's like a social situation or a work thing, or mm-hmm. so. I'll just stop it. Well, because sometimes I've 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 heard things where it's like, well, the minute you capture it or get onto it or become aware of it replace it with something like a positive version of the negative that you've just been talking about in your head. Mm. But does that does that work or what 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 do you think? Because it's easier said than done is what I'm saying, isn't it? So have you got any like tips on yeah. changing that negative self talk to more positive self talk? Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Okay, you are making me go deep here, Jeff. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Okay, let's do it, mate. Let's do it. Okay, so where a thought generated in the mind. Yeah, we don't actually know where thoughts come from, number one. Yeah, but we try to, if I say to you, don't think of a yellow monkey, you're going to think of a yellow monkey. Yeah, because I've just said it. So it's going to take your mind to a yellow monkey straight away. Yeah. Equally, what controls my thought processes? Yeah, people think that the mind is the one controlling everything. Yeah, but I'm going to completely flip that and say, what if your (laughs) nervous system and your feelings are driving your thought processes. Yeah? So something that is the biggest biohack for how you're thinking is your the way you are breathing. Okay? That is the number one way to get into your nervous system and to change your thought processes. Let me explain why that is. Okay? So when your nervous system is in a certain state, yeah, you will begin to breathe in a certain pattern like this, yeah, in and out, in and out. That breathing pattern correlates with a heart rate. So your heart rate then begins to beat at a certain pattern. The heart rate then speaks to the brain and creates a brainwave frequency. Yeah? So we're then in 
driven from the nervous system. The breath is then driving. The heart rate is then driving the thought process. Yeah? Your heart sends, the way you think, is 70 to 80% sent up from the body, up. It's sent up. It's sent up. Yeah? It's not this sending it down all the time, telling you how to feel. It's actually the other way around. So when we understand the only way, really, you know, immediately in the moment of when we're having negative thoughts, what can I do in the moment? Firstly, it's to notice you're having negative thoughts. But secondly, notice how you're breathing. Yeah? Because probably I would say over 50% of anxiety would be eradicated if people knew how to breathe, probably. 50% because people are breathing into the chest. Yeah, if you're breathing into your chest. Why do you think you're gonna have anxiety? Yeah, not filling me, I'm not using me full lung volume capacity. Yeah, you've got something called a pre botsinger complex, a signal that's sent from your brain down to your diaphragm. That is gonna send a signal of alert that you're not getting enough oxygen. Yeah, and that you then have a low tolerance to CO2 in the body which is doing its job by telling you you need to breathe. So if I tell you to hold your breath right now, you're going to get a feeling of anxiety. That's exactly what you're doing when you're not breathing correctly, but you're calling it anxiety, and it's just dysfunctional breathing. Yeah? So the number one, obviously, hack, I would say, into that is creating a breathing routine. And I'm not talking about all this... Yeah, which is just putting more pressure on an already stressed system sometimes. I'm not saying that that's not beneficial sometimes. But equally, how are you making sure that you're breathing efficient, efficiently all day, every day? Because, you know, when you're stressed on your laptop or on your phone, you're probably holding your breath. You're probably holding your breath. You know when your bird's doing your head in? Partner's doing your head in, your kids are doing your head in. What's happening with your breathing? Yeah, you're Probably right. Yeah. Breathing yeah. faster or holding yeah. your breath. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or you're hyperventilating. When you're angry, what's happening with your breathing? Yeah. Yeah. So, therefore, the, the, the quickest way to, to, to create some change in the moment would be, be breath. Secondly, you know, it would be. What can I do in this moment, if you like, that will change my experience? If I'm doing some breathing, great. If I'm able to ground into my body and bring myself out of the head, yeah? Because you can't change the same thought process inside the thought, the thought process that got you locked into it. Yeah? I can't change a thought by being locked in the same thought. So trying to change my mind at the same level of mind that got me into this way of thinking, it's not going to get you out of it. That's why trying to think positive when you've had a negative thought won't work. Yeah, it's why affirmations sometimes, saying I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, in the mirror, your body's basically saying you're lying. You're not happy. I don't feel happy. So therefore, are we being governed by our feelings? Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? And equally, yeah. giving yourself things, you know, giving yourself certain tools, Chef, that are going to help move through negativity. Yeah. You know what? So, some of that stuff you're just saying here, uh, you need to remind us. I was thinking, you're probably sat there thinking, didn't we fucking go through all of this months ago? <laughs> when we were on, I think it was whatever, level three or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah you need to remind you, yeah, it's the other way around, and it? it's 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 what's going on in the body that, that, that kicks everything off, isn't it? So, yeah. No, it's yeah. easy. Yeah. yeah. So anyone ever gone into an environment before and started thinking negative and you've moved into an environment that's completely safe, but you started feeling anxiety and with that anxiety, the thought process starts. Yeah. And what you then try to do is, why am I thinking negative? Why am I thinking negative? Why am I anxious? Why am I anxious? So you're trying to change your thought process with the same thought process, you'd say. Yeah. But what if you were to be able to change your breath Slow your breathing down. What do you think happens when you slow your breathing? What happens to your heart rate? Probably slows down. Well, absolutely slows down. 
if that slows down, the brain slows down. Yeah, that's that's a fact. So therefore, you know, the, the, the number one thing I'd say, fellas, is to, is to implement some sort of breathing. If you are feeling anxious or stressed, get a breathing practice in. It's not mumbo jumbo, hippy dippy stuff. Like athletes are doing this. This is what athletes are doing. Some of the top athletes have got breathing coaches. But it's it's not good enough for Bobby on County Road. He thinks it's for hippies. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy thought processes. It's like the best people are doing it. Why aren't I doing it? Right? So, you know, moving on from thinking then, man, this is becoming self-aware and creating tools for mental fitness and mental resilience for how you can move through life with more ease. Resilience doesn't mean pushing into pain. It means finding fluidity and adaptability when in the face of challenge. Yeah, that's what resilience means. Can I find fluidity and adaptability when faced with a challenge and choose to act differently? If you keep, you know, an example, fellas, is my little boy, Thomas. He goes into mats and he dislikes mats. So if he goes into mats all day, you know, a couple of times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and he hates mats, but he keeps choosing to go into mats with the same state of mind, disliking his teacher and releasing cortisol from his immune system, which is damn regulating his immune system. If he keeps choosing that consciously, does that make him silly? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it makes him silly. So if you keep doing the same thing, have the same thought processes, keep disliking the same people, having the same reactions to situations, and expecting something else other than yourself to change, does that make us daft? Yeah, it's probably a description of psychotic. 99% of us are psychotic because we expect everything else to change, but not us. Yeah, look on the screen, we're all lunatics. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fellas, so moving on then. Has anyone got any questions on thinking um, before we move on to feeling and compassion? We good? Yeah? Okay, moving on to the next pillar in the map, which is feeling and compassion. So this is our ability to have fun. Throughout my time and my own development journey, this was the biggest one for me. Yeah? The ability to have fun. And I don't mean going out, getting bevied, doing whatever we do, what a lot of people do. Yeah, for fun. Like, what are you doing without taking any substances to have fun in your life? Yeah. What do you do to create pleasure? Do you look at life through the eyes of a child and childlike wonderment, having fun, being childlike, playful with life? How emotionally intelligent are you with your partner, with your kids, with other people in work? Am I able to be adaptable with my emotions? Can I feel other people rather than think other people? We try to understand people and we try to understand feelings through thoughts. Say that back to yourself. I'm trying to understand feelings through thoughts does that make any sense no you cannot understand a feeling with a thought because a thought is logic a feeling is felt that's why men sometimes and women don't understand each other because men can be highly logical women are more emotional yeah by nature so has it that they're more felt and intuitive Men are more logic and external based. Yeah. Men want to go and achieve. So how do we create this sort of fluidity and sensuality with life where we're able to see and be happy and love the small things and have gratitude for what's already there? And I don't mean bypassing, going, ah, you know, at least I'm not living in, uh, in, in, in Africa. 
you know, I'm lucky to be here. It's like, I'm not talking about that type of gratitude because that comes with, it's like we're pitying other people. Yeah, so then we're going, well, I should feel better. But it's equally, what am I noticing that, I've, that is already happening for me that I can be grateful for? But equally, you know, still wanting to grow and expand as a man. You know, it might be the nice food. It might be getting a massage. It might be having, you know, self-love, self-care. Yeah, giving yourself time to just be you, having man time, making sure there's man time happening in your life. Yeah. Going for a walk on your own in nature or going for a walk with a group of other people that you like to connect with. Because as men, we're great to connect them when we're happy. Yeah, but most of us are walking around quite serious and disconnected. And what do most of us do when disconnected? We go alone. We disconnect. We deal with our problems on our own. We go to we go to our bedroom. We put Netflix on. We indulge in more food. Yeah, because we're trying to escape how we're feeling and don't want anyone else to know. Or we might, you know, you can even go to the pub. Might drive you to go out and have a bevy because I'm so stressed and overwhelmed with how I feel that I can't tolerate this stress anymore. I need to do something to alleviate it. So going and having a drink gives me that little bit of respite. Whereas I think, why am I getting to that point? Why am I mismanaging my feelings and stress levels to get to a point where I need to have a drink and it no longer becomes a conscious choice? Or I need to indulge in eating chocolate and my diet goes out the window. Yeah. Or I get to a point where I can't even feel my part because I'm overthinking that much. I'm so stressed. I'm so locked in the head that I forgot what it is to have fun and be playful with my partner and have a bit of a laugh and actually get the, the fruits of my labour as a man for everything I'm working for. Am I getting the fruits of that labour? Yeah. Even having great sex, man, like creating that time for these things to happen, creating, having, a, having a value on intimacy, you've got a value on your relationships. That's something that's a high value for you. Yeah. And I'll tell you the difference, man. If you're locked in the head, all you're going to be thinking about is getting to the end. If you're having any intimacy, getting to the end, getting to the end, getting to the end, being done, getting to the end. Needs to be finished and done now. If you're in your body, you're enjoying the moment. You're in the moment. You're not thinking at the end because you're completely here and you're feeling the experience. Yeah? Any questions on that, man, before we move on to the final pillar? No, we're good. Okay. If you've got anything, Ant, as well, don't forget, you've got the chat brother here. Good stuff. Okay, and finally, the final pillar, man, okay, is transformation and being. So this is our ability to self-govern. Yeah? This is the most fundamental pillar because if this is offline, everything else goes to shit, if you like, and will fall. Yeah? If we are not living life on purpose we haven't got a purpose we ha we have no idea of where we're moving towards we don't have goals to motivate us that light us up then essentially you're going to be like a warrior wandering around in the dark not knowing where he's meant to be going he's got all these tools but he's got no idea of where he's meant to be going or how to get there because you're not creating the vision yeah, it's what is my vision? What is the legacy I want to leave behind? And how do I bring this transformation online? Well, it's firstly understanding, am I living right now in alignment with life? If I'm waking up every day doing things I don't want to do, then that's probably you're not. I had a call with someone today um, for a session and he spoke about um, procrastination and how hard we can be when we're procrastinating I'm always procrastinating 
And I said, have you ever considered maybe you're doing something you don't want to be doing? So that procrastination is correct. It's not that you're procrastinating. You're doing something you don't want to be doing. It's not lighting you up. It's not in alignment with who you are. So maybe it could be that. So maybe consider, is it what I'm doing every day? Is it the job I'm in? Yeah? Is it the fact that I'm lacking this purpose in my life? Yeah? So it's how do we build on that? Yeah? How do we bring this transformation online? So for me, number one would be asking myself some bigger questions. Where do I want to be in 12 months? What do I want my life to look like? What am I doing today that's going to get me closer to that place? Is my vision clear? Because if I'm not holding my mind steady, yeah, and this is what we all do, if I tell you to sit down and think of a yellow monkey for 10 minutes, you can only do it for a couple of minutes and then your mind will jump somewhere else. Yeah, because that's the way the human mind has been conditioned. It just keeps moving and looking for solutions on different problems and it doesn't sit still. If I put a knife in your hand, yeah, and you can't use your hand and steady it, what's going to happen? What will happen with that knife if I can't steady it? Will it be safe? No, it won't be, it's not going to. I'm not safe if, I've, if I can't steady the knife I'm holding in my hand. If I can't steady the, my mind, are you going to live a safe life? And are you going to get to where you want to get to? You mightn't harm anyone, but you're harming yourself because you can't steady your mind. Your intelligence is turned against you because you're not reading the user's manual to who you are. Yeah, and I know as men, we don't like to read the user's manual. We like to try and set everything up without it. Yeah, but on this one, the technology within you is that great. You need to learn how to steady your own mind. You need to learn how to steady your own actions. You need to learn how to cultivate feelings in your body. Yeah, and how to get into the body. And equally, we have to learn to cultivate self-governance and leadership. So that means, who am I being? Yeah. If I'm saying I want to be here, I want to be operating here, but I'm operating at this level, are you showing that you want to be, your thoughts, feelings, and actions are operating here, but you need to be here to get to that level? Are you ever going to get there? You're not going to get there. Me, me little lads, um, me older lads, should I say, 17, he sent me a video on Ronaldo. And I love it because I know this information's going in that I speak to him about. But he sent me, you know, everybody wants to be Cristiano, but nobody's willing to do what Cristiano does. Yeah? So everybody wants to be happy. Everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to be content. Everyone wants to be in good relationships. But equally, that's shaped by who you're being. And if you're not thinking and doing and feeling, in certain ways, then you're by default saying you don't want to live in that way because you're not doing anything about it and you're not creating change. Yeah? Because when we live in, in alignment with life, man, we're living by inspiration. We're working towards something that's bigger than us. Yeah? It's bigger than us. We're actually not pushing life. We're being pulled towards life. Yeah, we're in flow, we're in a flow state and we're in flow with life. Rather than us always having to work so hard to get to where we want to get to. You never practice working happily to where you want to get to. Yeah, how often a day do you practice being happy? Genuine question, man, yeah. Genuine question what I'm asking here. How often in a day do you practice being happy? And we're probably talking minutes that you do. Okay. How often in a day do you practice being wound up, stressed, pissed off, negative, judgmental, angry with life? Most of the day. Most of us, yeah, we fluctuate. We have happy moments, really pissed off moments. But sometimes in the happy moments, we're not that happy, just a bit happy. Yeah. 
But if you become what you practice and who you're being, you're a human being, you become what you practice. So what I'm doing every day is going to determine who you're being and how you show up. But your level of awareness right now, man, after this call on these four pillars is fundamental to where the next year goes in your life. Because if you don't start paying attention to it, you're going to be stuck in the same place. But the funny thing is, you're actually going to think you're moving somewhere, but you're actually moving nowhere. You're going round in circles. Yeah? But your mind will trick you to think that you're going somewhere when you're not. Yeah? So, any questions on that, fellas? Or are we good at this point? Good good. stuff, okay. Some, some nuggets in there, mate. You Absolutely, brother. Smoke, you know that. Smoke coming off me pen here. Mate, the smoke coming off me ears. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I hope that helps. Yeah, this is something that I've, I work on to cultivate. It's a basic, basic map. This is why I say it's universal simple to follow you just need to follow the structures and start to implement it but the thing with men it's the implementation that we struggle with because we start, we start taking in more information of other things and then we don't start to just put the structure in place okay so before i just wrap it up man we've got any further questions or are we good yeah, feel free to ask anything if you've got anything, no big, no matter how big or small. I see on this, Paul, yeah? Yeah. Well, how do you advise you work this every day and just get the map out and just go through it? I would be looking, mate, yeah, obviously starting yeah. first and foremost. Every day, Paul, yeah, I get up in the morning, I write down, this is every single day, of every single day, I write the date, I write how I'm feeling, how I want to feel, or what I've got to do to feel that way. I write down seven things that I'm grateful for, Five goals for the day, and if there's anything else in my mind, I write that. Yeah. But times in the day where I don't feel, I don't know. Um, I think I might be doing too much. You know what I mean? But then I feel if I don't do as much, I'm not getting as far as what I gotta get. And where are you trying to get? To? I'm never satisfied. I want everything. You know what I mean? I want yeah. all. I want to be helping people. I want to be. You can't be positive all the time, can we? But some sort of belief. Negative to find the positive, haven't you? Is that a belief, though? Mm, yeah, of course, the belief, yeah. Because my, my, like, I'm not, obviously, I'm not saying I don't have negativity sometimes, that, that can come in and tiredness and things like that. Yeah. But I'm here to shatter the beliefs, mate. And I'm here to break down my own beliefs. And the belief yeah. that's been set upon us is that we're always meant to be, you're meant to be happy and, you know, as a human being, you're going to be yeah. happy and, and sad at times. Okay. Yeah. There is going to be moments that were sad if we lose a loved one. If, you know, I don't know, footy, if you like footy, might be a bit sad if someone loses in a final or you've something's happened, yeah, you've had an argument with your partner. If you're at an elevated state, yeah, if I'm in an elevated state, that means I'm conscious. The more conscious I am, the more choice I have over the things I do, the actions I take, how I feel and how I think. I've taken control of my faculties and my tools, which means if I'm controlling internally, regardless of the environment, yeah, then I become the master of my own destiny. Yeah. So being positive, if I'm if I'm negative, what part of the brain am I operating out of? Yeah, you'd, be, you'd have to say your limbic system, which is your emotional centers, which means your emotional senses are in survival, which means if I'm looking at the level of the nervous system, if I'm in survival, then that means that's the most reptilian part of who I am, which means that's not of a higher consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. But equally, mate, we're living in an environment that is constantly putting stresses on us. Yeah. So it's for us to be able to outmaneuver the environment if you like, so we're not being controlled by the environment. Similar to what I said about my little boy going into mats. You're going into mats and you're thinking and feeling the same way. 
isn't it about time you change how you're thinking and feeling before you get into that environment? So it could even be things such as visualizing, Barry. Yeah? yeah, showing up, mental rehearsal for how I'm showing up every day. Yeah, yeah ensuring that I get myself to a felt a felt level. You know, saying affirmations, trying to think positive is at the level of the mind, but your subconscious mind is the body. Yeah, yeah, which means, you know. You say to me, you're not going to eat any custard creams. Come with three days' time. You say, I'm never eating custard creams again. Three days' time, with two packets of custard creams in and two cups of tea. Mm. Crumbs on your face. And you go, oh, what happened there? I was never going to eat custard creams again. <laughs> wasn't you who ate the custard creams. In reality, your subconscious took over. Mm. You wasn't aware enough to stop that happening. Yeah. Yeah, your level of presence hasn't grown enough. To, to mitigate that. If you'd have maybe got to a point where you'd understood your stress levels earlier, that you wouldn't have got to that comfort. Yeah, does that make sense, brother? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Any more questions, man? Are we good? Good stuff. See, the thing, boy, I was, I, was doing, I was doing a lot of fasting and stuff as well. So I've got a good, a good routine. I'm doing fasting once a week. With my routine now, I'm in the gym, I'm sweating my fucking head all day and burning loads of energy. It's like so much I'm bringing into my life now to stop me doing what's good for me, you know what I mean? And I feel like I've got to do these things what put pressure on me because that's how you get to where you got to get to. I'm, I've come yeah. a long way and I've got, I've got, I've got, um, it's like I don't know what I'll do, I'll slow down, breathe, yeah. <laughs> breathe, yeah. breathe, firstly. But equally, mm. mate, you know, there's, there's deeper stuff we can get into there, buddy. Yeah. In terms of needing to be busy all the time. It's this Goggins mindset. Mm. I've seen that, uh, today. Yeah, it's, it's the Goggins cool. mindset, mate. Like, my opinion, mate, it's traumatised. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't validated by his dad, and that's driving him to, yeah. to show up. Eddie Hearn, you know, he, he, he get, he's up at 4 a.m. all the time, mate. He doesn't see his kids when he's home. He's on his phone pushing the swing. Like, that is not normal behaviour, mate, in my opinion, of a man who's centred and happy. It's maybe of someone who's driven by pain to outdo his dad. Yeah. yeah. That's my understanding of, you know, if you're always on your phone, you're never present. You're never doing what you want to do. You're not loving your family and being a father, then what's what's going on? Yeah. And there's, it's not so much what we're doing. It's where what we're doing is driven from. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not as much what we're doing. It's where it's driven from. Because yeah. if I'm driven from a wound and I'm driven from pain, I'm not saying that won't make you successful, mate. And doing, doing, doing won't. And that will absolutely get you there as well. But I believe there's another way to do it. It's bad and doing a journey. I'll do it. I'll do it. Your life, mate, yeah. Because where are you trying to work towards getting? When I get to, then I'll be happy. But how about you're happy now and then be even happier when you get it? Mm. Yeah. But if you don't take control of your faculties, brother which is your nervous system, your breath, your thinking, your feeling, your emotions, um, you know, your actions. We don't take control of that. And the drivers of our behaviour, body, then we're just mm. basically going to keep repeating it. And we're going to think that doing more is going to bring an answer. Yeah. And how burnt out and how much things are we going to need to do, man, before we realise that doing more doesn't work. Yeah. Doing the right things. I'm riddled, I'm riddled with injuries now, you know what I mean? Because I'm just constant with it. Pushing into pain. Mm. Yeah, we're pushing into pain. Mm. And and that's, again, a belief system. So something, you know, what, how I would implement this, man, is go through everything we spoke about and just ask the questions of you and then see what comes of it. If you've got any questions after this, message me um, on Instagram or on WhatsApp if you've got my number. Um... And equally, man, you know, from from September, I'm running. I put, there's a program I'm starting, which is a twelve um, twelve week, three month program, which is called the September Sprint. I'm calling it because most men get to this time of the year, and we look back on the last eight months, nine months, and we go, I "Haven't achieved anything I wanted to achieve. I haven't changed. The diet didn't happen. Still having the same problems in my relationship." I haven't hit the goals or targets I wanted to hit. So 
And I've had a year's wrote off now, I've only got another three months, four months. Yeah, so we sort of give up. Well, for me, it's like we've now got a quarter of the year left. You've got the time to turn that round if you're implementing the right routine structures and the, the right map. Yeah, and you'd actually take the time to invest in yourself. Yeah. Whether that time is just taking time to do it, whether it's financial investment, it's about you taking full ownership for where your life's at right now and doing, you know, taking a risk, a calculated risk to get to where you want to get to because doing it on your own hasn't worked at this point. So for me, this program that I'm running is very much around creating that transition over a fast period of time for men. So within a three-month period, getting you to put your year on fast forward, basically, by implementing things at a rapid pace that's going to create the change and by getting rid of the things that aren't, that aren't working. Yeah? So that's you know, that's something that's um, happening men in September, which I'll send you more about um, after the call, if you like. But feel free to obviously reach out to me as well um, if you've got any questions. Hey, man. Yeah? Yeah, Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Wow. Enjoy that. Yeah. Enjoy that. Yeah. 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 Lots of ponder on me. Yeah. What mate? Said so a lot to ponder on. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to watch a film tonight, man, you know everyone knows what I'm going to say now. If you've worked with me before, you want to watch a film that's going to uh, that's going to actually get you motivated a little bit and think. Yeah. And this will surprise you. What this is, by the way. Yeah, go and get your kids if you've got them. Go and put the Kung Fu Panda on. Kung Fu Panda, let's Kung do Fu it. Kung Fu Panda, go and watch number one Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, and you'll get some messages that'll slap you right across the face and help you wake up to stop sleepwalking through your day. Yeah, send me a message to tell me, wow, that just blew me socks off that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas. Well, well, thank you for that, mate. Stuff. See you later, man. See you later, boys. See you later. See you later, boys. See you later.